Greetings Captains and welcome to this review of Ultra Weather XP version 2.0. That on was provided to me by the developer, so thank you very much for that. Even so, I'll try to be as objective as even possible, but just to let you know of any potential bias in the review. The plugin was designed to work with both X-Plane 10 and 11. Even so, it's well worth noting that the plugin is currently Windows only and that it obviously doesn't work with any other weather or sky visualization plugin or scripts. Ultra Weather XP has a ton of features, just to mention a few. Atmosphere with Sky Horizon adjustable size control, scattering haze on terrain, scattering Rayleigh to make the terrain haze to be realistic, adjustable clouds brightness, adjustable cloud size and shape, and also resolution in X-Plane 11 only, adjustable cyrus size and shape, enhanced cloud appearance, HD clouds, adjustable cloud shadow power, size and resolution, sunlight effect on clouds, smooth clouds terrain blending, adjustable airplane light size, adjustable city light size and appearing time during sunset and sunrise, adjustable sky blueness if that's even a word, adjustable waves and and sun reflections on sea in x -Plane 11, normal and semantic sun glares, three different water colors for x -Plane 10, 13 different sky color textures, 12 different cloud textures, six cloud smoothness shaders, 12 different sun textures, and high quality thunderstorm sounds. Another great feature is that it's compatible with any other weather information collector plugin such as FS Global Real Weather and NOAA. It's sold from the explain.org store at the price of 35 US dollars. But if you already own version 1.5, then you can upgrade to version 2 for the price of $15.95. The installation is straightforward. After purchase, you download the archive, simply extract and move the extracted folder to the plugins folder of explain 10 or 11, and after activation, you're good to go. Included with the program is a user-friendly PDF manual describing all the features in addition to having pictures of all sky and cloud textures. In order to get most out of the program, you need to set visual effects to high in X-Plane 11 or turn on HDR in X-Plane 10. Furthermore, to use the shadow controls of the program, you need to turn on draw shadows on scenery. Now let's have a look at Ultra Weather XP in X-Plane 11. Okay folks, one thing important to notice is that the plugin by default is configured for lower end systems. Therefore, if you have a higher end system, you would without doubt want to make certain adjustments to get more out of the plugin, such as increasing the cloud resolution and so on, which we'll get into in just a second. Let's start off by bringing the control panel up to see what's inside. As you can see at first look, it may seem a bit overwhelming with a ton of things that can be controlled from inside the plugin. As mentioned, you can simply go ahead with the default settings, but if you own a higher end system, then you'll get much more out of the plugin by tweaking a few things. Then, after you've made up your mind about the best settings for you and your system, then you wouldn't have to mess around with these configurations. Notice that if you change the setting to the left, you'll need to reload X-Plane before the changes will take place. This involves the different sky colors, cloud textures, clouds smoothness and sun glare texture. Now, as mentioned previously, there are 13 different sky color textures. Since you need to restart X-Plane every time you want to test out a new sky color, this is quite Coomberstone. Fortunately, the author has made screenshots of every different sky color in the manual. I've also made a short video for you to show just a few of the sky colors, including the two different sun glares. Sit back and enjoy.
come back. Let's have a closer look at the control panel. We have the 12 different cloud textures here, which also needs a restart of Xplane. Again, quite cooperstone when you want to test each and single one. But again, the author has helped you by putting screenshots in the manual. There's the cloud smoothness control here, and the two different sun glares also shown in the short video sequence before. In the middle, we have three features only supported by Xplane 11. Cloud resolution, sun glare power, and sun reflection on C. Let's have a look at their function starting with cloud resolution, which obviously increases the resolution of the clouds. As you can see, when set to low, the clouds look blurry or out of focus, while when set to its highest setting, they become sharp and well-defined. Let's try out the sun glare power control. Its function is obvious. On to the sun reflection on the C control. If we take a look at the C here and try to change the setting. As you'll notice, the waves become more apparent with the setting on instead of off. Horizon size controls, as you can see the size of the sky gradient. Horizon haze can be set to on and off. Clouds transforming has, as far as I understand, to do with the transformation of clouds when you approach them from far to near. And whiteness inside clouds is, as far as I've understood, coupled to clouds transformation and can be used to correct for any potential clouds errors, causing whiteness to happen outside the clouds layer due to changes in the clouds transformation setting. To be honest, I haven't played around much with these two. With clouds ambience, you can change the brightness of clouds. Clouds shadow power controls how the shadows will appear on the ground. It can cause a drop in frames per second, so play around with it and set to your liking and your system specs. Clouds and cloud shadow size controls, as the name refers to, the size of both clouds and shadows. It too can cause a drop in frames per second, so again play around with it and set to your liking and your system specs. Cloud shadow resolution will increase or decrease the detail of the cloud shadow. This can also impact the frames per second on a lower end system, so be aware. Cloud drawing will increase or decrease the number of clouds and will obviously also have an effect on frames per second. City and airplane light size controls the size of the lights that are far away. City light appearing time will adjust the time when city lights turn on and off. Object shadow distance. This will adjust the distance in which object shadows will be drawn. Obviously, if set to highest level, this will have a huge impact on frames per second. Object shadow resolution is like the cloud shadow resolution, but for objects instead, thus increasing the detail of shadows on objects, also impacting frames per second. The two last buttons here will reset all controls to Ultra Weather XP default or to explain default values. So, as you can see, it's not only a weather visualization plugin, but also lets you control other things in the environment, such as city lights, shadow, etc. Is it good? Instead of answering that question, I've put something together for you to make up your own mind. Welcome back! 
In conclusion, what's really great about Ultra Weather XP version 2 is the sky colors are beautiful and there are a lot to choose from, the clouds look good and again there are many to choose from, the weather depiction is good but not spectacular but it's a good and more affordable alternative to its competitors, while the third party compatibility with weather information collectors such as NOAA and FS Global Real Weather is a great feature, the lack of weather injection will not let you see cloud fronts in the simulator. The high degree of configurability is great and particularly useful on lower end systems where you'll actually be able to configure the environment to gain a couple of extra frames per second compared to default weather. On the other hand, this high degree of configurability with all these many options and adjustment possibilities will perhaps overwhelm some of you. While the option to be able to change between a lot of different sky colors and clouds is good, the process of having to quit X-Plane until the changes take effect is cumberstone to say the least. Anyways, when you've first decided your best settings, then you won't have to mess around with these controls again. That was all I wanted to show you this time, thank you so much for watching and please do remember to share, like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. Until next time, take care.